What is going on everyone? It's March J8 here bringing you guys the news in the flash. Let's get right into it and let's start things off with some more Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes, this is not over yet and there it just seems to be more and more updates with each day that passes. So, to recap, DICE announces their star card system for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Star cards are these items you gain from in-game loot boxes that can be gained from in-game play or from crystals that can be purchased with real currency. These cards give player stats and abilities buffs in multiplayer that can range from anything to like 30% health regen to something like improved aim assist. On top of that, it was also revealed that hero characters like Luke or Darth Vader were locked behind a massive paywall which could only be unlocked by paying about 60,000 credits, which amounted to around 40 hours of gameplay. Or the process could be sped up by opening loot boxes which also had the chance of dropping more credits. To say that the community was not happy about these so-called features that essentially rewarded players with deeper wallets with higher advantages in multiplayer over players who simply either didn't want to pay for these in-game loot boxes or simply just couldn't afford them is a massive understatement as EA and DICE soon learn after they try to defend these practices by sending representatives on Reddit, but that only amounting to them getting the most downvoted comment in Reddit history reaching over 600,000 downvotes. After that, they made some changes to the game. They actually dropped the, the credit amount for heroes, I think, by 75%. But it just kept going more and more downhill. Soon, it was announced that the Belgian government was actually investigating the Star Wars title on whether its loot box slash dark card system should be considered a form of gambling or not and whether it's being promoted to underage players. And then just hours before the launch of the game, EA decided to pull the plug on microtransactions saying that they were listening to their fans and would launch it again at a later time after they made changes to it. Didn't really go into details on what those changes might be. It could be something extreme. It could be something extraordinarily small. But that is where I thought the story would end, at least until they decided to relaunch those microtransactions. But no, was I wrong. This story just kept going, and shortly after I made that second video, rumors started floating around that Disney actually played a large part in EA's decision to temporarily abort all microtransactions in that game. It turns out that those rumors were actually true. The Washington Post shared that Jimmy Patero, who is the chairman of Disney's Consumer Products and Interactive Media Division, made a phone call to EA hours before EA announced the temporary removal of the microtransactions to express Disney's executives' unhappiness with the outrage. Which makes tons of sense seeing as both EA and DICE are now in the forefront of one of the biggest microtransaction controversies of this year and impossibly in gaming history, all while using these pay to win features tactics, I should say, I'm not going to call them features, in a Star Wars title. Putting the Star Wars franchise itself, which has a massive major motion picture coming out next month, right in the crosshair of all of this bad publicity. Disney and Lucasfilm also released a statement after EA's announcement saying that they are in support of the temporary removal of loot crate purchasing. Oh, and it doesn't end there, because you remember the Belgian investigation we were just talking about? Well, it hasn't come to an end, but it seems more and more likely that they are going to find EA guilty of this and try to have this game banned. Now, while Belgium is still investigating this, the state of Hawaii has actually announced that they are taking ad action to address the predatory practices that EA is using in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now we're going to end off on my standpoint on all of this. I think that EA and DICE are a bunch of donkey fuck morons for trying to change up the loot box microtransaction system that most gamers have come to accept at this point. You know, that system that only primarily deals with cosmetics, emotes, and maybe even some special weapons and gear here and there. But it's never anything that completely changes the experience or gives any players a real advantage over other players. EA decided, for whatever reason, in their infinite wisdom or their bottomless wallets to say, fuck all that, even though it's worked incredibly well for games like CSGO, Overwatch, and COD, we're not going to have a season pass and we're only giving out free content, so let's put our items in our loot boxes that completely affect the multiplayer experience while also throwing in the scummiest of mobile game tactics to try and persuade players to buy more loot boxes since they're a pain in the ass to grind out in-game on not only a massive third-party licensed game, but also a game that is a part of a, one of the biggest franchises in the world and has a major motion picture coming out in less than a month. That was incredibly short-sighted on both EA and DICE's part. You can have a fucking loot box system in your game, and it can be successful too. This has already been proven. I just don't understand why EA would try to do this when they know that there is this tension 
between gamers and corporation, between what the line is on what is acceptable for microtransactions and what isn't. EA just decided to jump over that line and say, fuck it, we'll do what we want, and they got their asses handed to them for it. No, we are not going to accept these kind of transact microtransactions into our AAA $60 games. It's not going to happen. And if you do try to implant them in there, we, ch we won't buy your game. It's not worth it to us. It's not worth little Timmy fuckboy spending his dad's money and getting some fucking badass star cards and whooping our asses all because he has a fucking damage uh, buff or some health regen buff. That completely scares away new players. Like, why the fuck would any new player want to pick up your game if they're going to be thrown into situations where they're playing against people that are stacked to the rim with these awesome star cards all because they put money into the game rather than time and skill. It just it blows my mind that EA would ever think that this was a good idea, much less on a major third-party licensed game that has a major motion picture coming in a month. And don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those people sitting around being like, well, all loot boxes are bad and they all need to be removed from games. If that's your perspective, that's fine. I understand where you're coming from, but I disagree. I'm one of those kids that, you know, I shouldn't say kids, I'm an, I'm an adult, but when I was a kid, I gathered extra money that I earned and I went to the local card shop and I bought booster packs. And I was always excited to see what I got. Even the comments were exciting to me. I didn't want them, but they were exciting to me. Um, I was always hoping to get some rare Charizard card or some random Yu-Gi-Oh card. That I can't remember any Yu-Gi-Oh. Let's go with Jinzo. I like Jinzo. Um, but I was always excited to get those rare cards. Now, I compare that today, and yes, of course, one is a physical and the other is a digital. But at the same time, I don't really view it as anything differently. I don't view it as gambling because I'm getting something in return for my money. So it's kind of like... No, it's not really. And, you know, digital booster packs have been around for a long time now. So, I understand where people come from with they all need to be removed from games, but like I said, I disagree. And I, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm just going to call it out now. But since all this has happened with Star Wars Battlefront 2, I'm going to just guess that all that free content updates that they were talking about, uh, that they had planned out, is probably going to be nowhere near as big as they originally planned it to be. Anyways, if you guys want to learn more, I will leave links down below. Leave comments telling me how you feel about all of this. And let's move on. It is being reported that Quinn Allman, the former guitarist and one of the founding members of the band The Use, is actually suing his former band members claiming that they owe him proceeds from touring, album, and merchandise sales before he was removed from the band. He also claims that he is seeking damages for late and irregular royalties that are due to him and have said that his finances and credits have been hurt because of this. He says that after he was removed from the band, he was given a termination agreement, which would sign away his membership of the Use LLC and Burning Touring, Burning Touring Inc., both of which are entities that the Used operates in. He says that he never signed this because it didn't include a severance or allow him to control his royalty payments, which, let me remind you, this dude has been a part of this band for 13 years, and he was a founding member of it, and that is why his royalties have been so erratic. Anyways, if you guys want to learn more, check out the links below. And finally, let's get into some new music and music videos. Green Day has released a new music video for their new song, Back in the USA. Falling in Reverse has released a new music video for their song, Fuck You and All Your Friends. And Sleeping With Sirens has released a new Christmas song called Christmas on the Road. Be sure to check out all those down below in the links. You can find them all there. Thank you all for joining me for this episode. I Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Dislike if you didn't. Subscribe if you want more. And I will see you all on the next one. Mars out.